Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and today I thought I'd just do some panning around shots so we don't get too much camera shaking and also have a little bit of a chit chat about our first six months on the farm. Well, a little bit more than six months, we moved in 12 January. So, has it exceeded expectations or not met expectations living on the farm? Well, the answer is a strange one. Yes and no. So what are you bloody blowing about, Lee? Well, you feel totally free, that's for sure. You wake up in the morning and there's none of that dreaded feeling like, oh, I don't want to get up. I don't want to go to work. You do free, feel 100% free. The variety of our life as well. So many different things to do. It's impossible to get bored here. Well, unless you don't like farming. Oh, eggs for sale. Who's that? Oh, that's, that's us. What else has been so good? Exceeding expectations. Um, health benefits. I was a sick puppy when I first got here, that's for sure. Uh, just stresses and strains of working away, eating junk food, not exercising, so a lot of it self-inflicted as it is for anyone that's lets themselves get unfit. But uh, of course, depression as well, being away from the one you love. Very, very hard, but six months here, I'm like a new boy. So the opposite of that though, is my body has aged about 30 years. Yeah, I've lost, what is it, 8kg? But, I tell you what, I've, I've almost got zero muscle tone. And my body is battered. Absolutely battered. Now, usually when... I used to come back to Thailand after working away for a month or two. After about a week or so on the farm, you'd you'd get better, you get stronger, fitter, feel great. Here, I think what it is, the days are longer. I mean, to give you an example, usually, with well, the alarms on for quarter to six, normally get up at six, feed the ducks, feed the fish, and then. Uh, when I come back to the house, Toon's done a brew. Uh, and then we start start the real graft. So we normally have a bit of a break around about lunchtime. Sometimes we don't even have lunch though. Um, and then we're working, depending on the weather, probably up to well, at least five o'clock. Sometimes into the darkness. Um, and then it's feed the animals again. I do most of them. I blow my own trumpet. It's because Toon, Toon likes doing the quail, which we haven't shown yet. Um, and then she starts starts the dinner. So I normally have a bit of a play with the puppies and sort them out while she's doing that. So by the time we're all done and dusted, it's probably knocking on for 7 o'clock. Tweak a YouTube video sometimes, upload that. Toon either watches a little bit of Thai TV or um, we put a DVD on, which I very, very rarely see the end of. I normally crash out. And honestly, I, I could go to bed eight o'clock every single, every single night, no problem at all. So, are we where? I thought we'd be after six months. No, absolutely not. I was being totally unrealistic with my goals. I know Toon's Superwoman, but I'm certainly not Superman. And I think my biggest problem is I expect too much of myself and, and quite often others around me. You know, I, I expect to to go to bed absolutely exhausted. You know, hardly any... Hardly any breaks, very, very few days off, although we do enjoy them when we do have them. Um, and I just think, well, if you're going to do, let's say, if you if you did 12, 13, 14 hours a day, 
seven days a week. Why can't you finish it in six months? Look at it, nowhere near. Um, yes, we could pay people. Um, we have done a few, but it, normally it's Toon's nephew. Um, we could buy bigger machinery, do stuff more automated. Uh, again, it's 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 outlay though. Now that's been another thing. It has cost considerably more than we anticipated. Livestock, food for livestock, um, and then of course we've just started buying some machinery as well for the top tock and all the attachments. Which okay, it was absolute bargain, but you've still got to find the money for it. Uh, that's why we haven't replaced the GoPro yet. Um, but this is why I worked and saved towards this for over 10 years. So we've got our little nest egg. Um, but that has to last us. Not until I retire. It's just got to last us until we can turn the corner and start making a profit. This is the thing with poor Pang farming. It's, it's not throw it in and six months later it's all growing and you're going to crop it this is it's a lifestyle change do we feel safe living in the middle of nowhere it's not quite that remote it's a it's a two minute drive down there into the village but no one else lives down here a lot of people voice their concerns um, I mean think back right at the start of January we were living in the uh, the garage with no door on when we had the solar panels all fitted and we're scared that someone would steal them so we've not had one bit of trouble since we've been here yeah we've had a few people sniffing around the pond I think on two occasions but really that's been it um, night times it's, we don't find it unnerving, it's not that we're, we're nails or anything, it's not that we're incredibly brave or anything silly like that. It's just feeling comfortable in your own skin, on your own land, trusting your dogs, not being a numpty. When, when I say that, I mean, don't make enemies with people. Um, we've had a few heated discussions with people, but... Um, basically don't go around pissing people off because normally people don't do that to you around here um, and I'm sure a lot of you all know it things can get volatile quite quickly in Thailand if you start raising your voice and being a bit of a nosher so I'm not saying just keep your head down but, and let people walk over you but you know just a bit of decorum won't go amiss with, with some farang that I've seen Certainly in the immigration office. I can't believe what I've witnessed a few times. It's uh, quite embarrassing to be there. And, uh, you know, I've, I've heard what the immigration officers have got to say about Falangas uh, uh, in general. And, you know, it's um, I, I'm not surprised. I'm really not surprised from what I've seen. So, any trouble on the farm? Not really. We've had a few torches setting the dogs off. People were, um, I mean, one guy and his mates, they wanted to come and look for birds in here. We said yes, and they went way too close to the house. The dogs were going berserk, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't say, take the barking as a hint. So Toon had to go out and shout, saying you're too close to the house. But apart from that, and people ratting in the sugar cane, that's not so bad now because we've got a hoofing great hole in the land, so a lot of sugar cane left there that got dug out but yeah so do we think we're going to get to where we're going we're not even sure where we're going we've diversified so so much and we'll continue to do that that's our style some things we'll fail at um, and we do beat ourselves up quite a lot about those things Certainly if livestock uh, dies on us, but um, no, nah, just to keep on having a go, don't you? 
take some meat in this though. I haven't vlogged on this side since I said a big thank you to my mum, I think it was, on one of the vlogs. I can't believe we've done over a hundred vlogs. Considering I've had quite a few uh, breaks in vlogging. Sometimes it gets a little bit much, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes some of the comments, is, uh, they're just so negative. Most people are fine. It's a real buzz, some of the, some of the feedback we get from you guys. Um, but some of you just think, oh, do you know what, I, I really, really do find it, well, well, where could I say it, not hard going, but yeah, perhaps hard going, when people just comment after comment after each video being negative, you, you just think, well, if we're doing everything wrong or you think you could do better, well, why are you, why are you watching our videos, but hey ho, we're funny things people, aren't we? is it? Not bad. Am I missing the UK? Get a grip. Jesus. Am I missing anything from the UK though? For sure I am. My mum. The rest of the family of course. Anything else? Missing work. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Um, in the last few years it was just all work and no play anyway so um, it's not like I was out in the pub every weekend or anything like that I was saving money and normally travelling to and from work and living out of suitcase and staying in Premier Inns so no there's, there's next to nothing that I miss back in the UK and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not knocking the UK I never have and I never will. It's, it was it was very good to me. Work was very good to me as well. And um, it's the UK and and my employer helped us achieve what we're what we're doing now. So it's just not for me. I hadn't been happy in the UK for many many years. Even when me and Toon were there, Toon had eight years in the UK with me. I wasn't happy there. This is where we wanted to be. So it does drive you on. Oh, we've got the rice in next door. Jubbly jubbly. Would we have done anything different in the last six months? Ooh. <laughs> Building wise on the house, maybe I don't know. Uh, livestock wise, we got a couple of things wrong where some of the ducklings and the chicks passed away. That was through our errors, really. But I know some, someone was saying that you can expect 10% loss. Um, we exceeded that through gross stupidity. Um, okay, it was mainly down to. A very very quick change severe change in the weather one night and um, we did all we could but it's damage limitation uh, that was when we didn't have a GoPro so we didn't we didn't vlog that I'm not sure if I would have done that there might have been tears and swear words but yeah we lost quite a lot of chicks and ducklings in in a short space of time other than that, I don't think there's an awful lot that we would do differently. Just coming up to now the the area that we're going to grow the eucalyptus. I don't think you guys have seen it from this side before. You can see just between these trees here, that green line there is cassava. Um, potato, they call it around here. So the eucalyptus will start from there. And if I just, oh, this will be a problem. Harry will like this. Check these bad boys out. Oh, okay. Now, I don't normally wear socks and flip-flops. It's just that 
pond has been out today streaming, so I got wet, I had wellies on. I'll just get my socks on afterwards. So all this will be eucalyptus, and from here down to there. We just had the second day prepping the paddy field today and uh, it looks like we're going to have to chop it down to about two and a half, three rye. The soil's just not in a good state as far as weed and um, undulating goes. So we've raked it as much as we can or Toon's, Toon's nephew has. Uh, this is all going to get sprayed. And then we're going to pop them all in there, 5,000 of them. These islands I've started, so where is it, I can't really see them in here. All around here, just started strimming, tune started burning. Try and clear those because, oh, let's go this way. Because that's where people like to go ratting. So it's not that we're tight and we don't want people to get our rats off the farm. It's just that we want as few people on the farm at night as possible. So we're at the end of the spuds here. The thunder's starting to rock and roll a bit. Turn will be screaming from the house. It won't make my ears bleed though because it's a fair old lick back to the house there. But you won't be surprised to know that I'll still be able to hear her. giving you a bit of an, more of an insight onto the, the size of the land over there. I don't know whether you can see are the posts for the secret pond, secret poacher's pond, poacher's paradise pond we should call it. Yeah, 50 rye sounds a lot but it's only, it's only a smidge over 20 acres. 20 acres isn't a lot but when you walk it in one go yeah, it's a fair old distance. And of course, you can fit a lot of things in it as well. <clears throat> a lot of people that do poor pang farm, they, they normally do it on about four or five rye, or even less sometimes. But we're not. So I was speaking to uh, Kirk and Vince on an earlier vid. We're not really 100% poor pang. We're not really 100% mainstream farmers here either we're somewhere in between this cassava here is on our land but we let Toon's mum do what she wants for for 10 rye so she normally just rents it out to someone so we've got 40 rye left take off a couple of rye for the buildings and I uh, don't know what size for the lake um, so our main crops are the eucalyptus so there'll be five and a half thousand in the end of them. Bamboo, we're touching just over uh, 650 at the moment. I'm pretty sure it's going to go over 200. So that's another main crop all year round. The Taiwan grows all year. The fish are all year, of course. We don't empty the ponds. Uh, eggs, just a rolling commodity. What else? Meat wise for the, it'll be Muscovies and some chickens. Um, and then the fruit and vegetables which are just starting to get going. We've got limes coming out of our ears. Started a little veg patch but um, that'll take some establishing. I think we're about at the end. Yes, that is the end of the farm. There's a little white speck down there which is a post halfway along. So if we just pan back, there you go. Started walking from up there. There's the house over there. Don't you get scared if you get bitten by a snake? Flipping damn right. And where's the dogs? We've got six dogs, not one come with me. Useless. Puppies are doing well though. Um, Nanny Bambi, busy as ever. Uh, Uncle Klopp, quite grumpy. Uh, 
spoon, she's gradually coming round, she's like, like an evil stepmom she is. But yeah, they're all getting on, no one's, um, no one's bitten the puppies yet, so uh, I've come close a couple of times. Certainly when they're yap yapping at three o'clock in the morning for us to let them out. I don't, they're not in the house, we just put them in a, like a puppy cage when we go to bed. Uh, but they sprung the lock on that one morning and uh, they didn't wake us up, strangely, so it won't be long they'll be allowed out permanently. I just worry about the Buduk pond, the catfish pond, one of the men's up in there. I don't think they'd have a chance to get out, they'll get dragged under. So I think that'll do it, won't it? That's a long ass video, I've just looked at it because I kept on pausing it, it's 21 minutes. Jeez. Right, I think what I'll have to do is compress it to 10%. I normally do 20% 20, 20 compression to upload it. So the quality is probably going to be even worse than usual, guys. But uh, someone did ask if we could do slightly longer videos. And I thought, well, I'd, I've been trying to get away from them because my arms are killing me holding this camera up now. Um... So yeah, you've got your long video fix and then it'll be back to the short ones. Um, I'm thinking about doing a question and answers. Uh, I forgot all about them and then when I was scrolling through YouTube on suggested videos I saw Life in Thailand, Paul had put a question and answer up and I thought, yeah, I've only ever done one of them. And that was when I'd been on the gin. So this won't be fueled by gin or beer because we're off the beers. I think it's six days now. Health kick, uh, cut the coffee right down as well, maximum of two coffees a day, um, 18 litres of Pepsi though, that gives you a buzz, no, <laughs> uh, and of course we're trying to save a few quid as well, so it's going alright, it's probably why I've ended up skin and bone, so if I don't get more strength back by knocking the beer on the head, I'm going to try drinking even more. No. No, we won't. There you go. That rain's coming. I need to make a sharp exit. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully the video audio was loud enough for those who are hard of hearing. Um, there's nothing we can do about it, joking aside. Um, it is what it is on this phone until we can get something else sorted out. So bear with us. Or don't. <laughs> Cheers now. Ta-da. Oh, there's a nook bed nam. Wild duck. Lovely.